Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and that was Josh Cook uh, sporting a, um, a Phantom of the Opera kind of uh, yeah, I look. I think it's like Patag uh, Phantom of the Patagonia or something. <laughs> this is my raincoat. Yep. thought it might rain. Yeah, well, it did, and there is that uh, flood advisory warning going on until about noon today. Uh, so the weather is looking uh, pretty mixed rain throughout this week. So if you want to, if we want to take a quick look, do you want to take a look? Yeah, take a look in a book. <laughs> it's reading the weather. Yeah. All right. Thanks for <laughs> Here it is. Over me <laughs> well, I like I didn't know how long you we were gonna talk, and I just decided. Okay, 42 degrees outside. Your high is gonna be 56. Your low is gonna be 35. You have a 20 to 70 percent chance of rain. It's gonna be kind of like flash yes. rain kind of deals going on here. Saturday, it, partly sunny with a chance of showers, and it's gonna be kind of breezy. Uh, Saturday night, it looks like there's some. Uh, it's cold enough for some snow. We might be getting some uh, snow because you know, I remember uh, when I was going to college a couple years ago, it did snow in June, and it was like, wow, this is crazy. It's about May now. Um, I'm hoping not to see any more snow because uh, I've officially retired my snow coat. Right. Okay. Yeah, and um, for me, I, I just wore a sweater all winter long. I wore my Seattle, my Seattle sweater all, month long, all, all winter long. I'm like, oh, this is fine. That's There's only like one or two days where I had like the thick coat on. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, it was... Whatever. Nice. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about some news that are happening. We do have a guest here today. Uh, I got. Uh, we're going to be talking about TEDS at the city of Missoula. So you know, uh, townhouse exemption um, developments. Um, but we have. Um, let's see. Jeff Sutton. He is from the Advisory Council, College of Visual and Performing Arts at the University of Montana, coming here to talk about 70 Years of Art. It's going to be a UM alumni show, um, so he's been contacting UM alum to talk about this. But uh, bef uh, before we get, bring him on, we're going to get through some news. So locally, Cola Rally, uh, the uh, Missoula County Commissioner, has accepted a job in Bozeman, so she'll be leaving uh, the county commissioners, which the Missoula Democrat Committee will be used to pick three people to apply to replace Cola Rally, and the final choice of the three people uh, selected will be up to Josh Slotnick and Dave Sturmeyer to choose the replacement for Cola Rally. Well, after months of meeting the, in the Montana le State Legislature, uh, it is finally adjourned their biannual meetings. Um, about 300 bills have, pa have not yet passed and have been sent to Bullock's desk to be signed into law. Hannah's act was a big deal along with the Medicaid expansion. Lawmakers also approved a slimmed out proposal to change the statute of limitations for sex crimes against children. Uh, to change um, would, uh, so, uh, Let's see. Okay, the change was brought up in response to the case of James Jensen, a former Mile City athletic trainer who accused of abusing dozens of boys and who started to contact his victims last year. The legislature also approved a bill to build a new Montana Heritage Center in Helena, a project that has been voted down for the last several sessions and created grants for museums across the state as well as historic mansions in Billings and Hamilton. So it's a, it's a, it's a funding mechanism that helps them help fund themselves in a way. All right, so in the national news, Joe Biden has put his bid in for presidency of 2020. If he wins, he'll be 78 years old when, if elected. <laughs> Sorry, I probably shouldn't say when because it's a little bias. Um, it's, it's possible. It really is. Anything is possible, man. At this point, it really is. At All right. Point, anything could happen. And it also, in terms of the uh, ec econ uh, economy, the uh, the first quarter of uh, the United States economy is good. Uh, so, economists uh, looking for uh, for gross domestic product grew at an annual rate of 3.2 percent in the first quarter, and it's up from 2 percent at the end of last year, which is a significant turnaround from six weeks ago, when many analysts expected the sl uh, the slump of GDP growth just two percent or less all right so that's pretty much it for your news kind of breezed right through it i have a lot of show to talk about we have a very long um flagship friday for you guys it's a very special video because it is the end game for um um for, for the flagship program uh, after school program and it's also pre-critic so we'll talk about more about that um right after this uh video art clip from the missoula art museum
Hey guys, we're back here with Jeff Sutton. He is with the, the double checking in all the words, so Advisory Council of the College of Visual and Performing Arts at the yes. University of Montana. And he's here to present uh, an alumni art exhibit that's happening at uh, uh, Zootown Brew, May 3rd, first Friday. And that's happening from about five to eight, six to eight? Actually six to eight because uh, our commencement is at five, ends at 5.30. So we hope to get a lot of the artists and graduates down there to see the show as well. Yep. So this is an alumni showcase that highlights all the artists from the past 70 years. Yes, it does. It's, uh, it's an open invite to all alumni. We didn't really curate it if you were willing to participate you pretty much got in so it's a way for artists that have graduated from or gone to U of M to give back to the college. Nice. Uh, um, what made you come up uh, with this um, idea? Well first of all I think you know everybody realizes that we've gone through some tough times at the University of Montana. I think we're really all excited that things are stabilizing and the administration's you know getting things under control but it's still a time to be proactive and I think in tough times opportunities always present themselves and this is just an opportunity to maybe put some money back into the program and create some new opportunities and resources for students. Nice. And uh, a, a really cool trivia note is that this is the guy who started the first Friday here yeah. in the downtown Missoula. Yep. So, uh, 1988. You, 1988. Yeah. And that's as old as I am because I was born in 1988 <laughs> of around the same exact time. So, yeah. 30 years. Um, <laughs> don't look my age up, anyways. Yeah. Uh, so, it's, a, it's such a great opportunity for people to have an excuse to get out yeah. and just check out some of the stuff as well. Um, a lot of our art galleries are always there. But it's always nice to have a nice night to celebrate all the art. And this one is particularly special because it not only celebrates the art, but it celebrates the generations of art. Well, I, I think we were talking beforehand just about the impact that uh, our graduates and alum have on the art. And you see it around town every day. You see the Rudy Audio um, Grizzly in the, in the Oval or uh, Hadley Ferguson's uh, murals on the corner of Higgins and Broadway. Georgie Barris sculpture in Silver Park, or Jay Rummel in the top hat. You see graduates work all over Montana on license plates. Uh, and in the college in general, you see uh, John Schaffner's work on the Big Bang Theory, or Friends, or we have Academy Award winner J.K. Simmons on Farmers Insurance. So yeah. U of M alum from the arts are, are in our daily lives all over the the country and especially here in Missoula. Yeah, and I noticed that there's always a lot of exhibits that uh, the city really does help push forward to help um, a lot of the artists from university, like always an art call, public art, all that stuff to help pay for a lot of these artists to really just kind of ease into the professional world of art. Yeah, and, and I think it's really excited that we are a community that supports the art so much and that we have such a great resource like the College of Visual Performing Arts right here where provide so much talent to music and theater and to art and dance. There's a great dance showcase going on at the university uh, tonight and tomorrow night. If you have, have an opportunity to get over and see that, that's awesome. Okay. So. so if you're an artist or uh, enjoy the art or uh, are alumni, uh, alumni of the University of Montana um, College of Performing and Visual Arts, you guys can um, check out the art exhibit that's happening at Zootown Brew next Friday, which is May 3rd, at Zootown Brew, 6 to 8 p.m. Is there anything else you want to mention? Well, I just want to mention that we have, you know, people going back 70 years to some of our more current and uh, artists that are just graduating. And so it's really an opportunity to see the lineage, the historical lineage of the arts that have affected Montana and especially Missoula. So we're really excited to... Uh, do this, this is not an auction, it's a fixed price art exhibit. You can come in and buy art, half the money goes to the artists and half goes to the College of Visual Performing yep. Arts. And the money that goes to the College of Visual Arts, um, Performing and Visual Arts, I have to say the whole thing, um, it helps scholarships to help uh, cultivate the future artists of tomorrow. Yes, yeah. exactly, thanks awesome. God. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for, for having me yeah, on Yeah, thanks, today. I really appreciate it. So once again, this was uh, uh, Jeff Sutton, 
um, and he is with the uh, he's an advisory counsel for the College of Visual, Visual and Performing, Performing Arts. Arts. Yep. It's a mouthful. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having us this morning. It's known as Conan the Bar Bacterium, <laughs> and it can stand about it can it can survive at, in about a thousand times the lethal dose for humans. And it can, it can live for short periods of time at a thousand times that. So it's extremely tolerant of radiation. Um, if you think about population densities, um, most people in the world do not have regular access to grid electricity. How do those who live off the grid power up and charge their devices? Who has the power to know how energy and media technologies work and how is it correlated with social power hierarchies? What energy media use scenarios are best for the planetary environment and for probably human health in this context? And what are useful transcultural methods for researching these issues? And the only thing that's really different from Pathfinder and the uh, Spirit and Opportunity missions is that the rover is the whole sort of unit inside. And it, in Pathfinder, the rover was this little tiny unit um, sitting on one of the pedals, so to speak. But that gives you an idea for how we got the mission to Mars. So here is uh, the little rover that's about this big, sitting on one of the pedals. This is one of the first images that came back. And then when the rover drove off, uh, and looked back toward the spacecraft. You can kind of make out there uh, the logo and the flag, and you can see the camera has extended up and uh, is you know taking pictures. And this was um, after the mission ended, known as the renamed the Carl Sagan Memorial Station. The 1969 Buick Skylark was dutifully equipped to come to Montana. Two doors, no snow tires towing a 4x6 U-Haul trailer stuffed with pillows, a rocking chair, and toilet paper. We had lots of toilet paper. For some reason, my relatives in South Chicago believed that Montana was a vast tundra <laughs> devoid of any uh, urban amenities, igloos, outhouses, and perhaps corn cobs. <laughs> Thus began our second, my second, uh, venture into Montana. You know, this is the, the, you know, the end of the fossil fuel era, and these guys are hanging on, you know, as much as they can. And I keep saying, you know, people say, well, we need transition time. I was like, no, no, we just need to move on. You know, and, and you know, I've, I've heard every rationalization out there, you know, on this. And, and I'm like, you know, I mean, I, I always say that, you know, we didn't leave the Stone Age because we ran out of rocks. You know what I mean? Time to move on. Right? And so, you know, kind of, I think you just got to keep, you, you, you could even push on the economics of it. I mean, they're, they're, you know, for those of you who watch this kind of nationally, I mean, the Navajo Nation in a similar situation buying coal-fired generators and coal strip mines using, you know, their last bit because 85% of Navajo um, general fund comes from um, fossil fuels. And so, you know, I keep going, you know, no, you know, time to move on. And, and you know, Montana, it's the same thing. I mean, you have, you know, I don't know what your, I, I know that your wind potential is great. You know, you're, and, and so there is no time like the present to begin that transition. And, and I think just the liability issues. I mean, a lot of our battle in Minnesota is over the liability issues and the accountability issues because, as you said, Monta Montana Power went bankrupt. I mean, PG&E is declaring bankruptcy, the guys from the campfire. I mean, corporations uh, come and go, have identity crises as they, you know, morph. You know, they're viewed as natural persons under the law. You know, and I feel like if a corporation is a natural person, they're probably not only psychotic, but they have a multiple personality disorder. Well, the end times are here, and it's time to go to the movies for the last time, forever, always. Well, there's... A 
there is no other movie out this weekend, so batten down the hatches for a superhero movie that markets to kids, but adults will watch and shush kids during the movie. The movie starts out like any other movies, uh, like Return of the Jedi, you know, all the good guys have lost, and now they have to basically come back from a dire situation. So it's like the Return of the Jedi or the Matrix Re- Re- Revolutions. And, um, yeah. Hey, we, we, that we, sounds like a spoiler, but I don't know yet. I honestly don't know. Yeah, I haven't seen the movie yet, but I am going to see it uh, tomorrow. And uh, my friends promised me... Oh, you... There I am. Uh, there, you <laughs> there you go. You, you guys are going to go see it tomorrow? Yeah, all my friends promised not to spoil anything for me, but I get... I, I have, like, a feeling... A, a I, I have a feeling... That they might win in the end. Yeah, and I also have a theory that they're going to come together and fight the bad guy. Yeah, I, I don't even know who the bad guy will be in mm-hmm. this one. It might Maybe it's the themselves. Big, might be the big purple dude. But since it's like kind of like the last movie and a lot of the uh, characters are up for the contract, a lot of them yeah, might it's die. Like, it's like, will Robert Downey Jr. renew his contract? I don't know. Well, he, that's he's, that's he, one of the biggest he's, plot points in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> the, the end credit scene is actually just Robert Downey Jr. Like <laughs> just signing. Tearing a contract in half. And, and it's just like, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to go. I'm going to have to... I'm not going to gonna do this. Um, I'm not going to... Um, I'm not gonna do uh, Avengers anymore. Just I'm you know, done. just I'm kind of done with this. Now I'm gonna go shirtless and have a lamb over my shoulders. Yeah, yeah, just like in SNL, cause he was an he was an SNL cast member. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it was very bad. I haven't seen a lot of those sketches. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty bad. All right, moving on. Uh, you guys like uh, French movies, right? Uh, well, here's a ripoff of Black Swan with a not even a wink. It's called The White Crow. Never heard of it. Yeah, but what? think of black swan, but this is completely different. So it's like swans are is white, crows seat? are black, so whoosh, whoosh, double switch. Is it's it a, it's about ballet, and it's French. So it has actors who, you guessed it, happen to be French. Uh, Voldemort is in this movie, which means it's going to be pretty much a movie with Ralph Phineas. Um, it's also a biography, so you know it's going to be based on a true story. Uh, so yeah, this is another movie that's going to be going up against uh, Avengers today. Another movie is a documentary. Yes, documentaries. You know how the silent film went, uh, how silent films, uh, once they invented the talkie, silent films kind of went out the wayside? Well, so did pretty much everyone else, so here's another movie about that. Uh, kind of like those people who say uh, soldiers were spit on back in Vietnam, and uh, anyways, history is anyone's guess. It really is. It's like People say a lot of things. Who knows what actually happens? But you know, there were still silent films. A couple years into the talkies, but then they just, you know, people stopped going to them. It's economics, of course. But anyways, check out this documentary. It's called "Be Natural: Colon The Untold Story of Alice Guy Blanche." That's a long title. Yep. Usually, I try to keep it three words, three words There's or less. There's a lot of talking in that title, ironically. <laughs> well, you know, you got to do a lot of reading in silent films. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a silent film right there. So yeah, those are some of your movies that are coming out this week. Sweet. But I have a fairly long extended uh, Flex Your Fighter video of the week. It's called Read and Die. So the whole purpose of this is if you Ooh. read a book, you become a psycho murderer. Uh, I don't know. I just spoiled the movie. So anyways. Yeah, here's, yeah, it does, here's the movie. Game. Well, he, yeah, here's the movie. Hey, Ray, we have to do another book report. I know. I'm going to do fantasy. I really want to do horror. I haven't done it. I think you haven't chosen a book report yet, but it's due tomorrow. You're pathetic. Thank you very much. You're welcome. She's right. Let's go get a book. Yeah. yeah, I guess we have to. We'll get another cheese. Cheese. Right, it doesn't have very many words in it. It has pictures. That makes it great. Hey, Poppy, did you find a book yet? No. I've read up most of these books, so I can't find any good Okay, books. see yourself. Come on, Olya. Take care, Bob. No good books here. Whoa, what was that? Ashes. Mm, that looks super good. What do I look like for that tank? Ooh, fourteen 
dozen cookies. Gee, that's a lot. I don't know. I don't know. No, it was the book. You're blaming a book? You don't know the power of some of these. The power of knowledge? Ooh, so interesting. Huh? So interesting? Ooh, I'm scared. It's a book. Do you have to be so mean? Well, she still killed someone, and even if I don't like that kid, she still killed someone. She could be killing other people next. Hurry up, Emily. My parents are already making pizza for us to have. So just. Hey, what are you doing? Reading or something? I don't really like books after what happened. What are you doing? I think the same thing that happened to you happened to me. What happened? I killed. I blocked it up and when I woke up there was a body, so I hid it. And why are you telling me this? I thought you could help me. I don't want any part of hiding a disgusting dead body. I... I'm sorry, I, I can't. But if they catch me, I'll go to jail. I'll end up like you. I didn't go to jail. They caught me. They didn't catch you. Anyway, I'm not going to be part of this. I'll tell them it was your idea. Fine, I'll help you. So how much time do we have? We have one hour until the locker checks. Okay, we got to go. I need to do this stupid book report. It's like, it's not even good grade. It's only 25% of our class. And writing, that's the worst. Do you know what a dyslexic person has? But I wish somebody would kill somebody again so we didn't have to do school. It was the easiest week of my life when somebody died. Do you know what a dyslexic person has? No! It's like you're looking... You <laughs> like brought my backpack. What do you do? You're not going to... Do what you need to do. Okay. There's a lot. What? Just go to the library. 
Are you sure? Let's not maybe look at any of them. Wait, why is she here? Uh, Julia? Have you picked your book report books yet? Dad gave me a knife. It makes me feel good. Like he trusted me to use it. Not just that I would cut myself. That I actually know how to use it as a tool. That I actually know what to do with it. But my dad didn't know what power he gave me. And all the little boys and all the little girls didn't see what was coming next. But all their efforts were in vain. Time for some city counts of peoples. All right, so that was a nice, long, extended uh, Flagship Friday video. It's from the kids at Meadow Hill. Uh, today is their last day. Um, they hosted on Fridays. But let's talk about some some things that are uh, some things that are happening within your city, especially when they're talking about. Uh, working into uh, public works. Um, there's not much going on with that, but uh, this is uh, basically refunding and fi uh, funneling a lot of the BARSA funds, which is the Bridge and Road Safety and Accountability account uh, funds for the current year. It's So far, it's $875,000 in the state of Montana, um, and it's deviated throughout many of the communities to help r improve road districts and throughways. It's mostly connectivities to uh, have major uh, connections to highways and just connecting to the state of Montana. So I'm sorry, but some of your side roads that have a lot of potholes have to be done through the city of Missoula. So just so you guys know. Uh, so uh, BAFTA is a gas tax. So every four, five cents to the gallon that you pay for goes to improving Montana roads. So if you drive a car, you buy gas, that percent goes to this. And of course, you know, it's always, it's, it's what the city considers soft money because they don't know how much they're going to make every year. It just really depends how many people drive, how much driving is being taken place, how many people are coming through Missoula to pay for gas. It really is just that. So that's what they're doing. Th and they're talking about reallocating some funds through the city to kind of help improve this along the way as well. All right. That was uh, that. Was that public works, so you can check that meeting out. It kind of goes into more details about the numbers. You can check that out on the city's website. Land use and planning is what I really want to talk about because they're re uh, uh, they're uh, updating the ordinance for TEDs. And um, it's a TED talk, but it's more about the townhouse exemption uh, development. This is an amendment to an existing ordinance that has worked in the past, but now wants to work with improving policies in regards to townhouse development. Uh, and this is, uh, I actually believe that they're updating this ordinance solely based on the Hillview project, which has been kind of going through a lot of interesting tug of war between the city and developers. So here's Laval Means with Developmental Services, kind of gives us an overview of what's going on because this is not just a city of Missoula ordinance, but it's a state law. Uh, back in 2011, the state added consideration of townhomes into laws that were already in place related to condominiums. And this was intended to make financing of home ownership opportunities easier to um, accomplish. A couple key points out of that state law that I, I want to reference you to is that it is um, an exemption that can be considered on lots that are within incorporated cities and towns, which, which is what we are talking about in Missoula, and that 
The review of that townhome exemption um, is based on its conformance with applicable local zoning regulations. So, right, so that's what they wanted to help improve. Um, a lot of things is that uh, a lot of townhouse projects is like you apply once to get a townhouse um, development, but there's also uh, this new project that he'll be away is a three-phase project, and, they're, and one of the controversies is that they're going with is that each um, part of the townhouse that they're going to be building for the new property is like kind of like three different developments. So they're basically kind of requesting that to be like three different kind of deals. But in the way, they want to improve this language to help uh, streamline this proposal so they're able to do phasing projects. So I'll get to more on that a little bit later. But um, Lavelle also talks about how Missoula has been encouraged uh, in Missoula and having projects uh, streamlined to help with housing needs, um, Missoula's growing rapidly and they need a lot of places for people to stay. Uh, things began to change when Ted's became bigger and bigger with smaller lawns and prices of uh, uh, and prices do fluctuate. Last year, review of these projects for attached townhouses with their commercial properties to be used for renting. Um, Lavelle Means talks about the problems with some of the language in which they want to improve on. There have been challenges to timing, sequencing, and submittal requirements. There have been, um, you know, we need to work on and think about the gaps between zoning regulations and local regulations and the coordination that is needed there. And um, interpreted regulations that are not congruent with what the city council needs to be able to make an informed decision when it comes to the conditional use permits. All right, so that was just uh, kind of an overview of what some of the problems are, and they want to really help clarify some of the language. So they uh, they want to interpret the law, state laws on the the state level, and Lavelle, Lavelle goes more into details about these plans and adding sections, but still have the right to prevent TEDs from developing if needed. Uh, for example, uh, TEDs on a TED is like a big issue and they want to be like, okay, so they develop TEDs, but then they want to have more TEDs on top of the TEDs that are already there. So te more townhouses within the townhouse district that was rezoned. So th they wanted to make sure that it's clear that if they wanted to do that, they'd have to go through additional approval to do so. So Mr. Morton, I didn't get his first name. He talks it from a developer standpoint um, and he is all for uh, the clarification of this language. But just to remind you, as I've done some development and most developers with whom I'm acquainted do their research, perform their due diligence, they get to know the regulator, which is this council, what you said publicly, what your positions are from growth policies to conditional use, uh, to climate science, to wildfires, and I was looking on uh, your strategic framework that you're going to be considering. We go through all of that and we try to understand the expectations and then we put forward a plan. If that plan does not comport with your values and your public statements, then it's going to be your resolve and pushback if we're going to make change on walkability, on climate science, going to renewable energy, 100%. Uh, but I really appreciate the staff's work on this, and I think it helps clarify and hope you will endorse it. All right. So that was Mr. Uh, Morton. Um, and here's Teresa Jacobs. Uh, it drugs her concerns with a, with a metaphor. So this is, and it's a really good metaphor, trust me. I understand, you know, every fifth grader in the middle of a game of Foursquare um, would, uh, you know, protest if, if a group of people came in and said, we're going to do new rules. So I understand that it shouldn't be retroactive. But I also, I hope that there's an understanding, a caveat, caveat or a amendment to this to say that um, any decisions that you make regarding TED um, conditional use requests that are in process, some of us here are very invested in that, that, that your decision that this won't be retroactive doesn't turn around and bite you. All right, so that was Teresa Jacobs uh, giving that quote. I'm, I'm just really firing through all, of the, all these quotes and whatnot. So um, this next person, Alan Buchanan, uh, he, is a, uh, he is actually with the Hillview uh, Townhouse Project and is concerned that this update would jeopardize the construction of the Hillview phasing plan. And this is what he had to say about that. That is an exemption from subdivision review. It is a subdivision that's exempt from review. What you've effectively done is said, but we're not going to consider them lots when you're all said and done. We can do retracement surveys on, on TED lots to go through and, and actually create them as, as lots. So that provision, I'd, I would encourage you to take a harder look at because it's not consistent with state law. You can call them TED ownership 
units for purposes of zoning if you want to, but the reality is they are subdivision lots as defined by code, and so you've got a provision in here that has a problem. So I just want to fill you in a little bit on the background of some of the projects that are coming through and the effects. We cannot now file an application for a TED on the one that we've been dealing with for about the last nine months in trying to work it through the process because... All right, so that was Alan. Um, and he's just kind of concerned about like the proposal because uh, by changing the townhouse project, there's already a couple townhouses um, TED projects um, in development right now, and they're concerned that this would basically kind of affect how it works. John Dabari clarifies that this is not supposed to hurt, but this is supposed to help. And to, I guess, um, address your comment about this being a moratorium, in fact, it was explicitly not designed that way. It was explicitly designed to provide an avenue for folks to take advantage of not just um, townhome exemptions that require conditional use, but there's also and has always been the opportunity to do a subdivision which provides a clear path for, for phasing. So um, the, the idea behind this was to explicitly provide a clearer path forward for folks who want to uh, approach townhome exemption development and provide some additional flexibility for those folks who want to do a subdivision. All right, so a lot of the state law was put into place to help with the housing crisis and to help lower the prices for a lot of homes. And the city of Missoula kind of updated their own interpretation of the state law to help clarify and to help, um, help these projects move along while at the same time not uh, move uh, kind of things to kind of push things out. Um, and then a lot of times there's a big concern, especially the Missoula Organization of Realtors also spoke against this uh, TED proposal, just in general because they don't like TEDs. I mean, there's a lot of uh, issues with uh, being able to sell homes, and a lot of times a resale of uh, townhouses are very kind of slim. So I'm definitely worried because I do have a townhouse. So. I don't know. Ted's, Ted's have been around for a while now, and it's a good, a cheaper option for a lot of people who want to get a starter home. It just makes sense. So, well, so what do you think, Josh? Uh, you know, you've been kind of learning a little bit more and more about this as you've been uh, being on the show because I've been talking a lot of city council stuff. Kind of. I think Ted's a good dude. I think you should stick with him. Okay. Ted's a good dude, people. All right. So, if you want more information about the city of Missoula, you can go to CI. .missoula.mt.us. Look at that nice picture of Waterworks Hill. Yeah, yeah. I think I got it. It's just really close up. Yeah, it looks. Yeah, that's like the up the rattlesnake. You can see a bunch of these houses right here. Cool. So, anyways, ci.missoula.mt.us. You can find all these wonderful uh, website. How you can get in contact. How you can do uh, so so many things. And you can know how to. How do I? A lot of different things. License my city taxes, sewer utility, parking tickets court fines, all sorts of things like that as well, because just so you know, the, the processing fees, if you uh, ever went to the court for any kind of deals like paying tickets or seeing the judge, processing fees, you can get refunded for that. Just so you guys know, that passed last November, the state law was just like, that's unconstitutional. You guys are uh, can get the money back for all the processing fees. So yeah. And there's, Sweet. yep. So if you ever went to the courthouse in the last 10, 15 years, you can apply by going on to the city's website, and you can do that. All right, so that's just a little side note. But if you're interested in finding out more about my morning show, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, you made sure to write it out twice. Um, MCAT.org is going through a couple uh, interesting technical problems right now, um, but you can get through if you uh, just be like, I'm pushing through, because it does say, warning, uh, it gives you that warning sign, but if you go to advance and you kind of push through, it should be fine. All right. I think that pretty much does it for all your city council needs. I have events for you guys. We still have a good chunk of the show left. So I do have another art clip for you guys. Um, let's see. Which one should I show? This is, oh, this is the Gallery of the Visual Arts. So, you know, we had um, Jeff Sutton on here. And, um, you know, university uh, is always looking for uh, alumni of the art program. But these are current students at the art program. And they're going to be at the Social Science Building in the Gallery of the Visual Arts happening uh, until about May 3rd. So you have until next Friday to check out all these uh, uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts uh, kids earn their degrees. <laughs>
Okay, let's get your Gucci fanny packs on. It's time for your events. Uh, kicking off your events for Friday is the uh, uh, Kassirian Support Group. It's Heart Strong Center, peer-led uh, Kassirian uh, uh, Support Group, hosted by Lee Orr and Jenna Noor. Um, the group will offer a monthly uh, theme questions and open conversations. Mama Spotlight. Oh, it's Cesarian. Wow. Wow. What is wrong with me? It's Cesarian. Okay, so if you've had a cesarean section, uh, the Heart Strong Center is uh, a support group that helps women who have had cesarean sections. My bad. I totally messed it up already. Huh. It isn't the first time, and it won't be the last. Uh, so it's $25. It's for a six-month membership. And if you just drop in, it's 5 bucks. Pretty sweet deal. Uh, tiny sales and story time. Your kids that were from C-sections, or not, it depends. I'm not asking. Um, tiny tales and story time at Missoula Public Library. I'm sorry. I'm trying to bridge the gap between events and whatnot. Sorry, don't you judge. Don't, you don't have to worry about it. Yep. You're on track. Yep. All right. Oh, do you want to um, play some music after, like, the midpoint of events? Certainly. Cool. All right. I'll throw it to you, so just be aware. It might happen at any moment. Okay. okay. Tiny Tales and Storytime, Musical Public Library, 1030. Hands-on Science. Astronomy, starting at 11 a.m., which is when Spectrum Discovery Center opens. And their makerspace is Spirographs. You can travel through the interstellar neighborhood as we explore the universe at the Discovery Bench. Yarns and watercolor, around 12-ish. Uh, call in all knitters and crocheters, bring your lunch and some latest uh, projects to the boardroom on Friday to end your week with some crafty fun. Or their popular watercolor painting class returns during the class. Local artist Robert Peltzer will help you understand the de developed skill um, and techniques necessary to enjoy and succeed at watercolor painting. You can call Rob at 258-3867 and leave a message. It meets every Friday in the large meeting room from 12 to 2 p.m., so two hours of watercoloring. Who can ask for more? Arbor Day, tree celebration and sign dedication. University of Montana is Arbor Day at the root. State of Montana Arbor 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 Arbortum. Ugh. Man, words are hard. Anyway, it's just north of Main Hall. Um, hey, it's hard to say words you've never seen before. Yeah, especially uh, when you're talking about an arbitrarium. Yep. All right, so starting at 12:15. <laughs> Uh, welcome to the Arbor Day speaker uh, about trees. There's going to be a speaking about. Uh, there's going to be a speaker for the trees, and so we might see the Lorax. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Twelve forty-five, a parade from the uh, route to Eck Hall for Arbor Day tree planting, and then there's the uh, tour where they meet at the route just north of Main Hall. So it's an Arbor Day tree commence a celebration and sign dedication. It's wonderful. Nerf on the turf from his own sports arena is doing some um, Nerf for nothing. If you don't go. It's nothing, but if you go, you get Nerf on turf. And that happens from 5 to 8 p.m. at the Missoula Indoor Sports Arena. I think this is actually pretty fun. They do this a lot at the oh, Missoula Indoor yeah. Sports Arena. I think you just shoot each other with Nerf. Depends on what kind you're using, because they got the kind that just like feels like a paintball is hitting you. You know, that's they're like that nerf, is Nerf rival or something. So if some kid brings one of those on the turf, everybody's getting nerfed. Yep. Like, you're in trouble <laughs> when that kid shows. Yo, man, up. you bringing that Nerf on our turf, yo? Yeah, get, you get on out of here. Get your nerf off of our turf. <laughs> get your nerf off our turf. Yeah, get, I, like, I might actually go. To, I, I should go to that. <laughs> and then Pretty should much. we just like uh, should we just like straight up chant? Get your nerf off my turf. <laughs> yeah. Get your nerf off as my I, turf. And then it's like get your nerf <laughs> off my turf. I was get your like nerf. A paintball gun. Yeah. yeah, totally. All right, so we have a couple more events. Uh, there's the uh, UM Spring Radio. Sick. Uh, the University of Montana Spring Rodeo is a great fun for the whole family. It happens uh, Friday, 26th, and Saturday at the 27th at 7 p.m. Uh, and you can go to uh, umt.edu slash umrodeo, or you can call them at 728-5188. Um, 
area code 406, but if you're in Montana, you should know that. Um, oh, you said rodeo. It's the UM Spring Rodeo. I thought you said radio. No, it's rodeo. Oh, okay. It's at the Missoula Fairgrounds. Right. right. Yep, so you can go to the fairgrounds, you can see a rodeo, it's great. Rodeos are pretty great, and they're getting rarer and rarer, 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 and rarer, 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 rarer. Yep. And yeah, so it's going to happen also on Saturday as well, so you can, if you miss it tonight, you can always watch it tomorrow, but I can't watch it tomorrow because I'm doing MCT's Newsies, which is going to be playing this weekend, next weekend, and the following weekend. It's a three-week run. So MCT's uh, Disney's Newsies, the musical, they have to say Disney's the musical because it's a Disney play. Um, yeah. And it uh, features one of our summer camp kids, Diego, as the lead as Jack Kelly, who uh, basically uh, brings the Newsies together on a strike against, um, you know, wagers, rights, uh, uh, workers' rights. Pulitzer. Yep. Well, yeah. Yeah, Pulitzer's the big bad in this play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen the show a few times. I'm going to go see it. Which probably. is also based on a true story, but the Jack Kelly of that time was a little kid with an eye patch. Yeah. Yeah. If you look it up, it's actually really pr pretty crazy story. And it's a little more of a gang kind of turf war kind of deal where, like, uh, they did put a strike on, but also if they ever uh, had any other kids who weren't in the Newsies, like, core group, they beat them up. And they even beat up adults. Yeah. They didn't do as much of dancing. They did a lot of fighting. There were a lot more knives, broken glass bottles. Yeah. But the Disney version's cool, too. <laughs> so go check that out. So, yeah, that's happening at, at uh, the MC Center, um, C MC, MCT, MCT Center yeah. for Performing Arts. It's like our name, but without the... Uh, yeah. Usually, um, the acronyms associated with MC and T take a lot of time of my life. Yeah, I, I bet. <laughs> All right, let's uh, uh, a couple other things. Family Friendly Friday at the Top at Lounge. It's a great way to uh, hang out with your kids and have some drink specials. Uh, they have, um, let's see, what else do they have for Friday nights? Um, the Roxy is having some films. You know, they usually have films. Um, Sand Dunes, uh, Secret, Painted with a Twist. Uh, Dance in Concert at the University of Montana. Um, neon Lights at Flying Squirrel. And I think Idle Ranch Hands will be playing at Union Club because it says it right here. All right, you ready, Josh? Oh, oh sure. You want to take it away? Yeah, give me a, a mood. Give uh, me a mood. A mood? Um, Calypso. Calypso, that's not, that's a genre. I know. Give me a mood. Uh, uh, how about, um, how about um, very um, uplifting? Oh, okay. Um, we pick the right. Uh, Thanks, Josh. And that was Josh Cook on piano, Thanks. playing some nice, uh, smooth music mm. as we usher our way through the weekend. Um, we're one week away from a farmer's market, and I'm excited for that. Farmer's market starts next Saturday, but you guys can still check out the winter market, I believe, which will be at the Missoula Senior Center from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. So farmer's markets are usually uh, held here in the downtown Missoula near the Red X's and then another part underneath the bridge and then another part right in front of the Thomas Mar Bar. All those places uh, have different uh, things, knickknacks, and outdoor fun for all the family to enjoy. Yeah. You like the farmer's market, don't you? Yeah, I'll be there. Yep, we're going to be there uh, the first Saturday. Next Saturday, uh, me and Josh, uh, we're going to try to set up kind of like a booth. We're going to have Josh play some piano, uh, play some music, just kind of hang yeah, out. Yeah. And we're going to also su to help um, 
um, promote our summer camps that are happening. Uh, yeah, MCAT summer camps. If you have a kid who is aged between 9 and 13, they can j enjoy uh, three of our camps, which includes Animation Camp, Animation Camp 2, and our Time Travelers Camp, which I'll tell you more about never. Um, Heck yeah. Yep. <laughs> And yeah, they're, they're fun camps. They're, ha they're from 12 to 5 p.m. But then, of course, we have an older camp for kids who are 14 years to about 18. They have to be in school. And yeah, it's, uh, it's a zombie camp. I probably should have led on that. Zombie camp. <laughs> and it's an uh, all-day camp from 9 to 5 p.m. And it happens, uh, this all happens basically in July. So we have four camps. And you got four chances to uh, join us here at MCAT. We're, we're a nice little cult here. We right. are. Yeah. We're very nice. Yeah, we're a very nice cult. It's a nice time over here. We got things to do, animation, film. Yep. Just, uh, and Josh over here donated a lot of Legos to MCAT, so. Oh, yeah, so yeah. many Legos. So many Legos. Just all the Legos. Yep. Uh, I got OG Bionicle. You remember Bionicle? Of course, I have Bionicle Come, at my yeah. own house. Come get some Bionicle. Yep, it's Animate dope. Animate with it. Bionicle is like one of the e easiest and fun ways to animate without having a board and you're kind of restricted. So it's a good yeah. arm movement and stuff like that. Yep, fully posable figures. That's how you animate yep. well. Yep. Sick. Yep. So animate good on our Saturday drop-ins, which are from 1 to 5 p.m. every Saturday into Memorial Day weekend, which is coming up pretty soon. We have a whole month of Saturday drop-ins, and it happens from 1 to 5 p.m. But also, if you're interested in going to the uh, 47th annual YMCA River Bank Run, which goes to support the YMCA here in Missoula, it starts at 9 a.m. They start at the, uh, I believe it's the Missoula's oldest foot race is back for, uh, for its 47th year. The River Bank One will be held, and you can join them at the uh, historic downtown Missoula and the beautiful University of Montana campus while raising money for the YMCA. The 23rd Annual Forestry Day at Historic Forest Missoula. Jesse Rogers came on uh, Joel's show, Missoula Live. You should watch it. It's really good. And he invites a lot of local area nonprofit and civic groups to come on down. So it's back. This axe-throwing, log-rolling, saw-riving, uh, pole-climbing event. It's laid-back atmosphere. It's fun for the whole family. Events include cross-country saw sawing, wood chopping, pole climbing, axe throwing, and hot saws, which means they're basically saws with um, um, what's uh, oversized engines on them. So like uh, lawnmower engines on a saw, and it's going to be some hot saws. There'll be restored antique logging equipment demonstrations, like the steam power tractor, hands-on mining and uh, pl panning displays, and live antique lumber mill demonstrations run by the 1916K system traction tractor. Yep, you can climb to the top of the forest fire lookout um, or ring the bell at the Historic Fort Missoula Shea type locomotive engine number three. Um, it's $4 entry fee for adults, $3 for seniors, $2 for students, $10 for family, and anyone who's under the age of six um, get in free. Uh, there's the fifth annual Missoula bike swap, free cycles uh, this weekend starting at 10 a.m. and also on Sunday at 10 a.m. Do, do you have a bike or do you have equipment that needs a new home? Gear collection, collecting dust in the closet, looking to trade in your trusty steed for a new cruiser or just in the market for a new ride, free cycles is doing their fifth annual Missoula bike swap this weekend during their open hours. Open printmaking at Missoula Art Museum. Participants will, uh, who are already familiar with the printing process will welcome to come and use the MAMS uh, printing press. You have to be 18 years or older, and it starts at 11 at the Missoula Art Museum tomorrow. Tour of the state of Montana, Obertum. So, like I said, on Wednesday, it's a nice tour of all the diversity of trees. They have 2,300 trees and over 100 species at the University of Montana campus. And you get a guided tour on all the different types of trees throughout the University of Montana starting at 11 a.m. And it's, it's all about trees this weekend, so enjoy the trees. Uh, like, I get, like I said again, the UM Spring Rodeo, uh, it starts at 1 p.m. at the Missoula Fairgrounds. And... Uh, Yep, it's going to happen pretty much all day. And then the actual rodeo starts at 7 p.m. And you can go to umt.edu slash umrodeo for more information. Ninja competition. Ms. Gymnastics are what? doing a... What? what I said ninja competition. Okay. Yep, so if you like uh, uh, ni uh, American Ninja Warrior, Ms. Gymnastics is hosting their first ninja competition. And it's for kids age 6 to 12. Sorry, Josh. Oh, come on. As yeah. soon as you said ninja competition, I was like, whoa, I need to do that. But six to 12. Have you seen Beverly Hills Ninja? No. 
Is you would a, really love a good it. Movie? Chris Farley oh, okay. is raised by um, basically Shaolin monks. Oh, okay. Chris and Farley, yeah. And he is hilarious. Well, yeah, I mean, it's yep. Chris Farley. It's one of his, uh, basically his last, uh, his second to last movie before he died. That I yep. must see. And Chris Rock is in it. Wow. Well, now I, I'm going to go watch it. Right. Okay. Yep. Okay. Anyways, so that's what's happening there. They have Betty's Divine Revival Comedy Show. So this is a whole new kind of deal. And you basically, uh, the, the people who are, the girls who are doing the, uh, um, um, the comedy show, oh, geez, I'm over explaining this. Celebrate Fashion Week with the most amazing collaboration ever between Betty's Divine and Revival Comedy. The deal is that comedians get a royal treatment with their clothes and hair, and those who show up and pay $10 pay for it all. So basically, by going to the show, you're paying for their uh, makeover. And uh, the doors open at 6 p.m., and the show starts at 6.30. It's comedy. It's happening tomorrow night at 6 p.m. It's going to be great. It's wonderful. And then, of course, if you're interested in, in, in fly fishing, the Wilma is doing the International Fly Fishing Film Festival tomorrow night at the Wilma at 7 p.m. All right, so that's pretty much it. Uh, one last thing from Missoula Public Library on Sunday. They're doing the Missoula Public Library. And I'm done. I, this is as much as we can go because we're running out. Of, we ran out of time. Shoot, we made a good show though. Yep, but you want to play us out because we can put this on the internet. But of course. Yep, take it away, Josh. <laughs> 